Judicial precedent. Overruling. Overruling is where a court with appropriate standing departs from a binding precedent because they are of the view that it should no longer be considered good law. Where a precedent has been overruled, it is no longer binding and the newly created precedent takes its place. So there remains just one precedent on the point of law. The basic rule is that a court must follow the precedents from a higher court, but they can overrule decisions from courts lower in the hierarchy. A basic outline of the hierarchy is the Supreme Court, formerly House of Lords, the Court of Appeal, the Divisional Courts of the High Court, all other courts, county, crown, magistrates, tribunals. Where the precedent was set by a court of the same level, the court is generally bound by the previous decision, but this is subject to exceptions. Different considerations apply, depending on the level of court, as to whether the court may overrule a previous decision of a court of the same level. The House of Lords was replaced by the Supreme Court on 1 October 2009. The Supreme Court has the same jurisdiction as the House of Lords in terms of its ability to overrule the lower courts in addition to its own previous decisions. In 1966, the Lord Chancellor, Lord Gardiner, issued a practice statement allowing the House of Lords to overrule a previous decision where it appears right to do so. That is, where it would lead to injustice in a particular case or hamper the proper development of the law. This is known as the 1966 practice statement. Whilst the House of Lords had this power, they were reluctant to use it. In Nulla v. DPP, 1973, they refused to overrule the controversial case of Shaw v. DPP, 1962, despite the fact that the majority thought Shaw was wrongly decided. Lord Reed stated, In the general interest of certainty in the law we must be sure that there is some very good reason before we so act. In considering whether to use the 1966 practice statement, Justices of the Supreme Court need to be mindful of the retrospective effect of their decisions. In Cunningham, 1982, the House of Lords refused to overrule the previous decision of R. V. Vickers, 1957, relating to the mens rea of murder. This was because of the retrospective effect it would have on those convicted of murder under the previous ruling and may have been subject to the death penalty. Despite the reluctance to use the 1966 practice statement, there have been a number of notable cases where the House of Lords have used their power. In British Railways Board v. Harrington, 1972, the House of Lords used the practice statement to overrule Addy v. Dumbreck, 1929, on an occupier's duty owed to trespasses. In Pepper v. Hart, 1993, the Lords overruled Davis v. Johnson, 1978, regarding the use of Hansard as an aid to statutory interpretation. In RVG and R, 2003, the House of Lords overruled MPC v Caldwell, 1982, in relation to the test of recklessness applicable for criminal damage. The Court of Appeal can overrule decisions made by the High Court. It is generally bound by its own previous decisions. Both the High Court and the Court of Appeal are subject to the exceptions set out in Young v Bristol Aeroplane. This may allow them to overrule their own decisions in limited circumstances. The three exceptions are, 1. Where the previous decision was made per incurium. 2. Where a subsequent decision of the House of Lords was inconsistent. Or 3. Where there are two conflicting previous decisions. Per incurium means in error. If the previous decision of the Court of Appeal can be shown to be demonstrably wrong, the Court of Appeal may overrule it. It must relate to an error in the law, for example a statute or precedent had been overlooked. They cannot depart simply because they believe the outcome was wrong in principle or unfair. In Ricards v Ricards, 1989, it was accepted that in exceptional circumstances and where it is clear that an appeal to the final appeal court is not possible, the Court of Appeal may overrule its previous decision. In summary, overruling is a method judges can use to avoid a binding precedent. The ability to overrule will depend upon where the court fits into the hierarchy. Departing from precedent is controversial as it involves judicial lawmaking and creates uncertainty in the law. The effect of overruling is that the previous precedent is no longer binding and is replaced by the newly created precedent. 
This video is part of a series of videos on law from www.elawresources.co.uk. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel www.youtube.com slash at elawresources. It's free to do so and will help us to keep providing these videos. Check out our website which provides lecture outlines and case summaries. See also www.elawrevision.org.uk for revision games and quizzes. Thanks for watching.